Thank you. Um, so as Jeannie uh, mentioned, I'm one of the spinal cord injury doctors uh, based at Harborview. Um, and I'm just going to real briefly uh, kind of introduce the project that we've um, been really excited about that we've been working on the last, I guess, about six plus months. Um, and the grant that we were lucky to receive from the Nielsen Foundation to kind of get us going with this. And then turn things over to Amy and Leslie who are going to um, uh, talk a little bit about hands-free technology. Um, so we called our project, I guess I should have backed up a bit, uh, we called our project Connectability, Access to Assistive Technology for People with Spinal Cord Injury. Um, to just real briefly kind of make sure everybody's on the same page for what um, kind of institution Harborview is, if, you're, if you may not be familiar with it, it's a regional uh, level one trauma center and the only level one trauma center in a five state region including Washington, Alaska, Montana, Wyoming, and Idaho. It's owned by King County and managed by University of Washington. Um, it's a county safety net hospital, which means we have a really diverse uh, clientele um, and often a, a population that doesn't necessarily have the resources to buy um, uh, their own assistive technology uh, devices. Um, Harborview and University of Washington sort of as a joint program has been consistently ranked in the top five um, nationally for rehabilitation programs uh, for I think as long as they've been collecting that data. But um, we've been very limited in some of our resources for assistive technology and various other programs. But we found that uh, when we started thinking about applying for this grant that our assistive technology offerings were extremely, extremely outdated. Um, and uh, really this grant allowed us to kind of get uh, moving towards getting caught up to speed. Uh, just to real quickly review some of the scientific evidence uh, for assistive technology. So people actually have researched this and um, they found that AT, so assistive technology for computer access, um, has improved quality of life as a means for accessing information, social networks, and different types of work and leisure activities um, for people with uh, spinal cord injury. And then ECS, or environmental control systems, have been shown to increase feelings of independence and also uh, creating positive self-perceptions for uh, individuals with cervical or higher level spinal cord injuries. So as I mentioned, we were lucky to get a Nielsen uh, grant uh, that uh, funding for that started on October 31st of 2018. It's a one-year grant um, and will run uh, through October 30th of this year, 2019. Uh, and we were awarded kind of the full amount that we could have received, $100,000 for this project. Um, so our project aims, we had a few kind of key aims. One was to create an assistive technology advisory board and I think um, you know, I, this time right now is, is limited. We'll be at the AT table much of today, but I think that's been one of the uh, things from this project that um, we've been most excited about, the different collaborations that um, have, have come about from this uh, advisory board. So various people today can certainly spend more time talking with you about that. Um, and then our other goal was to really build a state-of-the-art assistive technology center also with some mobile units that we could deploy throughout the hospital uh, for people that maybe haven't come to inpatient rehab yet or people that are, for whatever reason, their mobility is not kind of at a point that they're ready to access the lab. And then also uh, be able to train the different clinicians, primarily occupational and speech therapists, um, and looking forward to, to hopefully t training some volunteers uh, so that they could work with people to train them to use this different technology. Uh, and then we're kind of in the process of trying to uh, market our program uh, throughout um, Harborview and uh, really let people know what uh, new capabilities we have and kind of go from there. Uh, so as I mentioned, the AT Advisory Board has been something that we've been very excited about. This was our last uh, board meeting um, where somebody was trying to stand in a closet to be able to get the whole group. <laughs> We're in a fairly small room, so, uh, so that's our best picture of the group at the moment. Um, but so our, our Advisory Board is a really interesting, uh, different collaboration of people with different skill sets and backgrounds. So uh, we have different members of the Harborview Assistive Technology Committee, uh, both Amy and Leslie who will be speaking right after me are, are members of that committee. Um, then we have assistive technology experts who have spinal cord injury, um, and then some representatives from different local technology companies, um, many of whom are here today, uh, that uh, have been able to con collaborate, and then some other assistive technology specialists, uh, both uh, from the VA hospital and um, other uh, local companies. Um, this is, I, I'll just summarize this slide, it's kind of text dense, but basically uh, the assistive technology lab um, uh, serves as a, a a route that we can offer specialized evaluation and training with cutting edge technology, really with the goal of improving lives uh, for people living with spinal cord injury. 
Um, we have experienced uh, occupational and speech therapists that um, offer individual sessions uh, you know, where you could get a referral to OT or a referral to speech therapy and they would actually you know, carry on the, the session, uh, the therapy session in the lab, um, really with the goal of improving independence in life and also thinking about you know, maybe going back to work or going back to school or, or different goals that people may have. Um, and also looking at things like computer and phone access, smart home technology, gaming, and different uh, alternate communication uh, options. So a few highlighted programs, and Amy and Leslie are going to really kind of expand on some of these, but uh, computer and phone access, so we have a ton of different mouse options, switches, voice control. Uh, we have several different smart home technology options um, and can really talk people through what uh, might be good options for their own use and what might be compatible, you know, different types of devices uh, working together. Um, as far as adaptive gaming, so you could actually get an occupational therapy referral to meet with one of our therapists and, and get going with uh, adaptive gaming options. Um, and then what's been uh, another sort of exciting spin-off is some of our monthly gaming sessions where some um, people from different tech companies, our therapists, uh, people in patient, in, in patient rehab, and then people that you know, have maybe been through our program but come in to participate. Uh, so monthly gaming, um, gaming night options. Um, have been really exciting. Uh, and then looking at alternative communication, including things like eye control um, devices, switch controls, different things like that. Um, other capabilities we have, we do have a 3D printer. Um, so looking at ways that you could uh, have uh, little devices or you know, fabricated um, that are relatively cheap rather than having to spend kind of the, the costs that uh, medical devices often run at a very elevated price. Um, we're looking to uh, kind of in the coming uh, months and year, get going with some community classes where we'd put on a particular topic and people would be able to meet uh, either maybe one of our therapists, one of our uh, individuals with spinal cord injury that's sort of an AT expert in whatever area they may know a lot about. And then also looking at um, some of our uh, AT advisory board uh, members uh, that are employed by different tech companies coming in to talk about new tech uh, that they're developing and also get some of um, our experts you know, with spinal cord injuries input uh, into what works for them and what doesn't. Uh, and then looking also at training staff and other professionals, so Amy and Leslie and Kara uh, from the VA um, were kind enough to do a presentation for some of our uh, rehabilitation medicine residents uh, just this past uh, week or so um, to try to just get the newer physicians up to speed on what, um, what work we're doing and what options exist for their patients in the future. And then looking at training other therapists at Harborview, other therapists in the community, student ther therapy students and, and all of that. Um, and this, I think, is my last slide, and I'll turn things over to Amy and Leslie. So our projected timeline, we had our soft opening just in the last uh, week and a half, so that was May 1st. Started to bring uh, people into the lab to you know, actually use the technology that we've been um, purchasing and setting up for the last many months. Uh, June 1st is uh, when we're targeting to have really a formal process that an outpatient could get a referral to the lab and uh, start meeting with a therapist to address whatever sort of technology needs they may um, be able to identify. July 1st is where we're looking at being kind of, we're fully up to speed. Uh, people on the inpatient side, the outpatient side are really utilizing the lab as much as possible. Um, we're hoping by September 1st, when we start looking to compile kind of our year-end report for the Nielsen Foundation, um, that uh, we'll be able to really demonstrate a high utilization of the lab. And then um, our grant cycle will conclude October 30th, and then we're sort of looking to um, continue to work on ways to, uh, to continue to have some sort of revenue that we can keep our lab updated because as I'm sure you're all aware, technology gets outdated rather quickly, so we don't want to be back in the uh, setting of having out of date uh, equipment to offer for people. And then I think just references for those two studies I mentioned. So I'll turn things over to Amy and Leslie who have uh, a lot of fun stuff to tell you about. <laughs> 